shut up compressor. Okay, now that the cockpit's done, it's time to go ahead and finish up the stuff I need to do in order to be able to close up the jug's fuselage. Key among that is the supercharger turbine. Now, the Tamiya instructions would have you paint it like some ghastly burnt iron. But I am going to use, to start out with, some MRP steel. Now, this isn't as glossy as I would maybe like it to be, but it's a fairly functional part. It's going to be on the underside. So there we have it. Now while I'm doing this, I'm also going to go ahead and get the inside of the little hood that covers it. Once this is all joined together, this will be cleaned up on the outside and painted, but it's really tough to get in here to do anything on the inside once you glue it. So. Don't want to try to be reaching in the future. Call that good. It's definitely one of those that like won't be visible, except at a glancing angle, but from a glancing angle, it's possibly noticeable. So all right, that's that. Now, something else I'm doing, I'm doing these uh, intercooler vent doors, and they are going to go essentially right in here. And basically, you know, when you look at it from the outside, you can see right in there, etc. The door on top will sort of cover that a bit, but at the same time, eh, you can see in there to a degree I don't like. So these are basically intended just to close that off and provide a little bit of a sense of shit going places. Now, they weren't steel, they were more of like a flat aluminum. But uh, I've got the color in the airbrush and I want these things to move along. So. Stop moving. Please stop moving. My plan is definitely come back in here with a lighter shade of silver and finish them up, but Again, I don't need these things to look super fancy because you're basically only going to get a glimpse. Okay, there's those. I'm going to dump the steel back in and swap over to a brighter color and we will finish this one off. Okay, for the second phase of these, we're going to use some dura aluminum and a little few drops of some light arctic gray, which is basically a very dirty white. So you can see that makes a interesting sort of milkier, milkier aluminum look, which is exactly what we want. And before I push ahead, I'm also going to add a few drops. There's a cricket on the bottom of this. A 
few drops of Mr. Rapid Thinner, which is kind of like the awesome alter ego of Mr. Leveling Thinner. And because this is MRP, we really don't need thinner, but a few drops can help change the performance profile just enough to be interesting. So in the case of the Mr. Rapid Thinner, it will flatten the colors out a little bit and it will also make sure that the white and the metallic mix together to the degree that we want. It's like that sort of a dirty aluminum looking thing, kind of like, uh, almost like AC ductwork, sort of. I first tried to spray some uh, Gunge GX2 in here. And for whatever reason, it just did not bite at all. Went down great elsewhere, but this stuff just sort of laughed it off. It's kind of annoying. Okay, I think those look pretty well sorted. All right, let that soak for a few minutes. And let's go ahead and install some things, shall we? So this spar is a super tight fit, which is great, but it gets in the way of test fitting things. So this side should have, there it is. Now the nice thing about MRP metallics is they are very quick to dry. Let's move you out of the way, move you over here. So this, literally plugs into there just like that that's all there is to fitting that guy in there and quick fit check there you go look how much of that you see barely any <laughs> so just a little bit of extra thin right there to lock it in place and call that a day okay now let's play around with these intercooler ducts. Okay, so basically the way that they go in is they the open side faces the fuselage and they curve down. And holy hell, I need to clean these off first. Less leakage on this one. Sweet. Okay. So basically, they go in like so. Just like that. Now when you look in there, well now you don't see daylight anymore. You see a little hint of what's going on. So we're gonna get some CA going here. We're gonna put a little right here.
Okay, that's looking pretty good. Set that over there. Get that side installed too. I'm going to look from this angle here. If you really get a good look in there with the right lighting, you can barely see all the way down the duct. So I cut that as a win. Now I'm going to double check the instructions. I am 99% sure that those are the only things that we need to install absolutely 100% before we close this. Yep. So if you look right here, this is basically what needs to go in. C9, we are able to install after the fact, after we close things, before we put on G4. So we've got a little bit of time on that one. We can let those sit. I just put a little bit of to me extra thin on there. I'm gonna hold that until it's nice and locked in place. Okay, so we're at the moment of truth now and it's time to install the cockpit and close the fuselage. So the spar being in place greatly helps with the installation of the fuselage. It essentially sits, as you can see right there, the cockpit and the tabs on the side sit right on top of that spar. beautiful thing about the spar is that the fit is so tight that once you basically shove it together it holds the whole assembly in place <clears throat> so there's nothing else to do you don't have to worry about gluing the cockpit in place and all that stuff and as you can see even already the oversized instrument panel wiring doesn't look quite so bad once it's in here and once the windscreen goes on top it's gonna obscure a whole lot more not only because the windscreen has the typical distortion that clear parts have in 148 scale, but you're going to also have the frame running all along here that's going to hide even more of this. So I think I made the right call. Same with that throttle lever. Um, I thought it looked cartoonishly large in the photos I was taking last night, but it's just big enough to be noticed. So, yay. Everything else is fitting nicely. God, I love to me engineering. <laughs> All right, let's check the bottom. There's everything's looking good there too. I think I'm just about ready to commit to some glue here. Don't want to leave that where it's gonna contaminate anything. these extraneous pieces of tape off this. Not needed. So this is probably the trickiest joint right here and this is pretty much due to having to install those two lovely dorsal elements of the fuselage. So we're just going to hold this for a few minutes. We have to do a little bit of smoothing up here up front. This fillet fits mostly well, but not quite all the way.
So that's now in place. I mean, I feel like the front up here is literally just a formality. I think if I had to pick any downside about this kit, it is the sprue gates right there where you have a bunch of these fastener details. Fortunately, we should be able to restore those as we need to, I think. So with that, we basically got most of the top done. We just have to get the tail in place. Tail's always a pretty easy one. Just the joys of pinching, styring together. Now wait to glue the rest of the tail until a little bit later in the process. So let's move around to the underside here. Just erasing a bit of sprue gate awkwardness there. See, one of the nice things with the underside is even though it's going to be bare metal, it's on the underside. It doesn't require, at least in my way of making models, quite as much focus. Look at that bead. That's awesome. Go ahead and get carry this thing down while we're here. that we're going to get a good join in here. And there you have it. The fuselage is together. Woohoo! Now it's late as shit, so I'm going to need to call it a night, but really quick. Who doesn't love how awesome Tamiya kits are? This jug in particular. Just look at that. Wings on. Yay. All right. So I'm going to pause there, uh, go to sleep for a bit, and we'll pick this up in a little bit.